John Eugene Bishop was born on September 26, 1951 in Mishawaka, Indiana. His parents, James and Pansy Bishop, moved the family to Bristol, Tennessee when he was a young boy. He had an older brother and sister who were twins named Jim and Janet. They were not a Christian family and rarely attended church. An energetic young man, John loved sports. He played basketball, ran track, and served as captain of the East High Patriots football team. Three days before his 16th birthday, John met some teenagers who invited him to a Youth for Christ crusade. He was so impressed by the joy he saw in them, he decided to attend. He had to find out why they were so happy. Although Brother C.E. Autry's Bible preaching stirred John's heart, he didn't go forward during the invitation. As he left the meeting, someone handed him a gospel tract. Later that night, he was under conviction and could not sleep. After tossing and turning, he got up at midnight and started reading the tract. The scriptures, John 3.16 in particular, spoke to his heart. On that Saturday night in September of 1966, John Bishop knelt beside his bed and accepted Jesus as his Lord and Savior. John grew quickly as a Christian. He exhibited a tremendous zeal for the things of God. Sometimes he was laughed at and mocked because of his stand for the Lord. Despite the opposition, John continued to mature spiritually. His Sunday school teacher, Larry Morton, discipled him and nurtured his faith. John was only a high school senior when he got the call to fill the pulpit for a pastor who was ill in a nearby town called Goose Pimple, Virginia. He preached there for six months. Following Brother Larry's advice, John decided to attend Bible college and in the fall of 1970, enrolled in Tennessee Temple University. Before long, he became known as one of the most fervent young preachers on campus. He had a strong desire to learn about ministry work and to serve the Lord. At college, John became acquainted with a special young lady named Donna Hardy. Growing up on a farm in Illinois, Donna was raised by Christian parents and was a godly young lady. These two young people both had a heart for God, and their relationship grew quickly into a deep love for each other. After graduation in June of 1973, John and Donna were married. By faith, Brother John stepped out into the ministry as a young evangelist. He and his new bride had little financial support. Their home church, Emmanuel Baptist in Bristol, Tennessee, provided the bishops with $100 a week when they didn't have any evangelistic meetings scheduled. They worked with the church teenagers and bus ministry during these times. When he was able to schedule revival meetings, Brother John preached Bible messages to the adults, while Donna took the young people for children's classes. Mrs. Bishop was a talented ventriloquist. She used her puppet to teach Bible stories to the children. In 1975, the Lord led and enabled the bishops to purchase 40 acres of property in Rosebud, Arkansas to start a Christian camp. Triple S Christian Ranch was named for its threefold mission, salvation, separation, and service to God. The bishop's vision was that at Triple S, young people would be saved and would focus on God's will for their lives. In 1985, after traveling for 11 years, Brother John was led by God to become pastor of the Cleburne County Baptist Church in Heber Springs, Arkansas. Initially, the church only had a handful of people. The Lord blessed Brother John and his family, and soon the crowd grew to a thriving membership of 200. God's hand of blessing was evident in the lives of the bishops. However, in 1995, they had no idea how their lives were about to change. It was the day after Thanksgiving. Um, he got up in the morning, he always got up in the morning and had his devotions. He had a rocking chair. He liked to rock and he would rock in that rocking chair and have his devotions and um, he just kept sitting there and sitting there and you know, I knew he was not having devotions that long, and so I, I talked to him, and he just didn't respond. I thought, well, maybe he's praying and so forth. So after a while, I went over there, and I shook him, and I said, John, what's, what's wrong? And he just kind of looked up at me real slow, and he didn't answer. And um, <clears throat> so I tried to get him to talk. Well, he couldn't talk. He couldn't respond to me. He just sat there. And uh, so I said, I said, John, if you understand what I'm saying, blink your eyes. So finally he would 
Blinky's eyes real slow. At some point after my illness, I lost my memory, unable to remember the past to such extent that I had difficulty talking, even knowing words to say. I could not read or write. I lost total ability. It was just hard for me to believe because I'll never forget when he said, now who am I, what am I, you know, who am I, and what am I, and who are you, and, and those questions. I asked her one day, what am I? She said, you're a preacher. And I remember how I said, what is a preacher? I had been pastoring at that time for many years, had been an evangelist for many years, and so, but I forgot all there was. And I said, what is a preacher? And she said, John, that's somebody who tells others what God wants them to know. And I said, wow, I couldn't be anything better. And so I decided right then there that if that's what God had called me to do, I gonna ask him to help me do it. And so I did continue pastoring a little Baptist church there in the area uh, where we lived. And, um, and now I travel full time across the country, just going to churches and all kinds of places, institutions, where there's hurting people, whether it's a one-on-one -on -one conversation with somebody in a hospital bed or nursing home, or whether it's speaking to a group of hundreds of people. I just want to tell people God is good.